Let me bang you. I do let you bang. Hey, let me bang you, Jamie, man. I let you bang. I let you bang. I let you bang. Greetings, Mary's and Virgins. Go for Jesus. No for gay Jesus, people. Hey, I'm not surprised, motherfuckers. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time once again for your favorite mixed martial arts podcast. Recording out of Los Angeles, California, it's MMA Roasted with Adam Hunter. Who the fuck is that guy? What's up, people? Welcome to a brand new MMA Roasted Podcast. Me, Adam Hunter. I'm waiting for my, my co-host to show up, Don Fry. I got him on with you, though. And, uh, and I got my buddy, Jared Gooden, here, who uh, he, he's an hour early. Might be the first time a black person has ever been early in the history of <laughs> the world. But fuck it. We'll do it. Uh, coming off a huge win. How are you, man? Man, I'm great, man. I'm not letting... CPT slow me down, man. For everybody who doesn't know what CPT is, that's color people time. <laughs> yes, no, no, hell no, man. You and by the way, your last fight, I watched it again, was a war. Uh the guy got you down, he had you in the choke. Were you hurt at all or no? Uh hurt, no, sir. Um that's the best way to explain it is like we get hit in training and sparring all the time. I wouldn't say I was hurt, but it's just the name of the game. I know the commentators have to make it sound more exciting, but no, I wasn't hurt, man. I was in the fire and I love it. Well, see, because he had you on the ground and then he was talking shit to you while you were down, like right when you got right when the round ended and then you were talking shit back, which is yeah. a bold move. A guy who gets taken down and almost and choked. I don't, I'm not saying almost choke, but you got up and you were and you stared him down. Uh, was that just like, fuck it, you can't finish me? Is that what you were thinking? Man, um, yes, and it was just, I know he was still, he was upset uh, from yesterday, the day before at Wayans, because he was mad I wouldn't shake his hand. Like, people kill me with that. It's like, oh, you gotta show respect, shake their hand, all that. No, man, like, you're you're standing in front of everything I want. You know what I mean? You're in front of the house of my mom, I my mom retire. So no, man, I'm not gonna shake your hand. I mean, I'm, I, I'll shake your hand when I'm, when I'm done killing you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so then your second round, you hit a beautiful left hook. Oh, it was good. And you had him wobble. Is that the best feeling in the world? You see somebody's like feet wobble backwards. Is that just like, what, what, what's, what, what's that like? Um, the best way to explain it is like a shark smelling blood in the water. Like I love seeing people get hurt, man. And once I see you hurt, I'm not going to stop until you're, you're, you're done, you know? So it was the best feeling. But I'll tell you what, the better feeling that is getting my hand raised, man. Have Bruce uh -huh. Buffer save money. I was so happy for you. Uh, hey, Don, are you? Can you hear us, Don Fry? All right, Don's still figuring out. He, Don's on like AOL. You know, he has like a, a modem. You know, sometimes I think he's better <laughs> off just yelling out his out out his window, and I have a better shot of hearing him. Uh, right. Or, or he smoke actually, signals. Smoke signals. Yeah, exactly. One hundred percent. Oh, there he is, Don. There he is, Don, the legend, Don Fry. Yeah, I, didn't, I didn't push the button. That said. I didn't push it saying it's okay to record my voice. So oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're okay. Everything nowadays. Uh, Jerry Gooden, are you a fan of Don yeah. Fry? 100%. I'm not going to lie to you. My face lit when I saw you, brother. How are you doing, Mr. Fry? Good, sir. How are you doing, man? Congratulations. Thank you, sir, man. I, man, I'm doing better than so anything like you, sir. I'm doing very well, man. Dude, so, like, go ahead. Thank, thank you, sir. So Jared made it to the UFC. Thank you, sir. And then uh, he made it to the UFC. He was killing it. And then he just had some dumb luck. He got a couple guys. Uh, uh, then he got, he got cut from the UFC. Uh, he got cut. Then he made his way back to the mm -hmm. UFC. Took a fight on eight days notice. Mm -hmm. Lost the decision. Fought again. And uh, and won a huge win over, over mm -hmm. a stud. Uh, now, how hard was it when you got cut? Did you think, oh, man, that's it? It's over? I, I honestly did um because my dream t was my only dream my goal in life was to get in the ufc and i the best way to explain it was i was the only the only way to describe myself who jared was is i'm a fighter i'm, I'm going to get in the ufc but um yeah i didn't know like the best way to describe it is like i got i went to a really dark uh dark part of my life when i got cut because again that's all out that's all i was and like i had uh suicidal suicidal thoughts and everything but thankfully i have my coach and my my therapist and everybody taught me back off the ledge man and it's only made me stronger, you know what I mean? I believe people need dark times like that just to make them stronger, you know what I mean? 
So, I mean, you were alone. Did you, did you have to go back to like a day job? Was it, was it like, did uh, you, thankfully I didn't have to go back to a, same thing. I had to go back to a day job, but what sucked is I had to uh, move back in with my mom for a couple, for a couple months. So that, that definitely sucked. You know what I mean? But again, we're back. So right, right, we're right. back. Right. Right. So you know, it's, you can always count on mom, you know, mom and dad are always there for you. That's, that's cool. Well, Don, you gotta, after his last you know, fight, want you to see that. yeah. Well, Don, after his last fight, he bought his mom a house. Yes, I did. Oh, awesome, man! That's awesome. That's Thank awesome. You. I wish I could have done that. But Jared, now, now, yeah, yeah. Jared, now that now that you you met your goal, now that you met your goal of fighting in the UFC, you got to set a new goal. You know, to achieve more in the UFC, to get the to get the gold belt and to hang on to it. That was my problem. I would I would set a goal, I'd meet the goal, and then I wouldn't step up. I wouldn't set another goal, you know, and and keep achieving more. You know, I would meet the goal and I'd be happy. So you, you gotta you gotta always set new goals and to achieve and keep climbing higher. Yes, sir. Hey. Again, it's 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 beautifully said, but it's amazing to hear from a legend, sir. Thank you. <laughs> now, now, Jared, how do you buy a house for ten thousand dollars? By the way, uh, I, I made more than ten. <laughs> but um, best way to explain it is um, I, I we we bought houses off auction, man. That's the best way. Like, I'm not gonna go too deep into it, but yeah, we bought houses off auction. Oh, that's awesome. Good for you, man. Now, uh, now, where are you based out of? I'm in uh, I'm in Gwinnett, Georgia, just above Atlanta, Georgia. Um. Yeah, man, I, I'm 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 gonna rep Gwinnett till I die. You know, everybody in Georgia was like, "Oh, I'm from Atlanta." I love Gwinnett, man. Gwinnett's raised me. I've been out here for 23 years. I'm when I shine, they're shining. Now, I I just watched that Freaknik documentary. Please tell me that your mom wasn't a part of the Freaknik because uh, she's about that age. Did did did? did you... <laughs> 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 you threw me off with that one, man. Hey, I'm not gonna lie to you. What's funny is um. What's cool about my mom is like me and her could talk about anything. I, I we've said wild stuff to each other. So like, look, look, she hasn't told me she was a part of this stuff, but I wouldn't be surprised. Oh, okay, because because people are recognizing their aunts and their, and their pastors and their parents now. And it's a whole generation of people going, "Wait a minute, that's my pastor," you know, getting down in a freak nick. So I'm just wondering. I know you're that was in Atlanta, right? Yeah, I believe so. Yes, sir. What's funny is um. Me and my sister, my sister's five years older than me. Me and my sister were both Valentine's Day babies. Wow. <laughs> because I came two weeks late, my sister came three weeks late. <laughs> we're, we're both Valentine's Day baby. That's that's hilarious to me. <laughs> now, now I noticed that your fight you don't use that much head movement, but I don't think. Do you have a neck? Like your neck is. Like, <laughs> you have. You can't tell. Because your oh your head's always like like a turtle, and I'm like, but I don't know if he could actually move his head. Uh, <laughs> I can't, I can't turn my neck. I just turn my whole body when I turn when I'm turning. <laughs> no, yeah, I, I um somebody like me, I don't really care to get hit. Um I, I know that sounds foolish. My coach even told me to stop saying that, but I don't care to get hit. That's why I don't move my head. There's nothing that anybody's gonna bring to me that I haven't already felt and that I cannot dish out better. So bring what you guys bring what you guys got. I'm gonna take it and destroy you worse. I love it. So when's your next fight? Uh May eleventh for fighting in St. Louis, baby. Wow, St. Louis, Missouri. May and who are you fighting? I'm fighting Kevin Jusse. If I'm saying his, if, it's, if I'm saying his last name right, um, what I, but what I know about him is what people keep commenting me about. Um, he he's a he's a top 100 best strikers in the world, and so I'm excited to knock him out just because I know I have to get a number after I knock him out. You know, so hey, congrats wow. to him. But it's gonna be more to me on my record when I knock him out. Now, did you did you wrestle in high school and college? No, I wish I did, man, but my, my mom wouldn't let me. <laughs> Your mom, so did you, did you play football or? So thankfully, yes, sir. Yeah, I played uh, growing up. I played baseball, basketball, and football. Football was my main thing. I love defense. I love hitting people. There's nothing like it. You know what I mean? That's why I'm a fighter now. <laughs> yeah. So when did you start training? I started training at 17 years old, which is funny. Is it's, That's two years after I gave up on football. The reason I, I don't like football or oh, I don't want to say I don't like, I still watch it and all that. The reason I don't play it anymore is because I realize I'm not a team player. There's a lot of times where I was playing football, we're in the playoffs and we couldn't make it to the championships because somebody missed their block. Somebody couldn't like run the ball. Somebody couldn't throw it or catch the ball. So I hated losing 
because of somebody else. When it comes to fighting, only person I can blame is me. You know what I mean? Like I, that's why I hate fighters. Are like, oh, I lost because of my coach. Oh, I lost because of this. No, stupid. It's you. You know what I mean? That's why. That's why I like it when I step in the cage. It's all on me. Got it. Got it. Got it. Now, who do you think's gonna win? By the way, Mike Tyson or Jay Paul? I know. I know that's a very. Uh, who do you think's gonna win? Man, come on now. You know I gotta go, with my boy, Mike Tyson. I'm, but I'm pretty sure Jake Paul's gonna pay him off. He's like, don't knock me out. <laughs> Don, who do you think's gonna win? I got Tyson. If it well, if it goes out the first round, it's a setup. You know, Tyson's carrying him. Yeah. I mean, Don, how old are you, Don? You're 57. How old are you? You're Ty Tyson's age. Yeah, yeah, I'm 58. I think. So how do you feel as a 58-year-old? Like, how do you think you would do against a guy like Jake Paul? Like, for real? Oh, you kill him, bro. Well, I'd, yeah, I'd have to get my ass in shape for sure. But <laughs> I'm going now. Today. Uh, God, yeah, you, said after, after getting. But, but uh -oh, how hard would that uh -oh, be for you? Here it comes. How, but how, how still hard? Got, yeah, go on, Bill. You still got one patch, one punch knockout power, right? Hmm. At your age, you have one yeah, punch knockout. I hope out. so. <laughs> but, like, I'm, I'm just saying, because Don, I mean, Mike Tyson looks like, you see, he's, he's putting these, like, 12-second clips up where he's, like, day three, and he looks fucking huge, insane. But he's only hitting the thing for 12 seconds. Awesome. He's but, awesome. But, but at the same time, we're not seeing him spar. That's all, that's all you need. <laughs> yeah, he's right. That's all you need, 12 seconds. Yeah, that's all, that's all, Mike, that's all Mike Tyson needs, man. Shit. Yeah, all, yeah, all he needs is, okay, fight and then how long it takes to walk to the other side of the ring you know and hit the guy that's all he fucking needs if jake, if jake paul knocks out mike tyson i might be done with sports like i may just be done like i, oh, I seriously my. may not watch another I, I, you I, know I, what yeah go on that's i, nah, I never even thought of that i can't even <laughs> think of something like that like that well, it's not like I said, didn't think of it. I don't, I don't see Jake Paul knocking out Mike Tyson, brother. Like, I believe they're making it like no. a... Oh. Yeah, yeah, I don't see John Lothian knocking out Mike Tyson, baby. So, Bill, Bill by the way, we're talking to Jared Knight. No. And I know you're late, Bill, because uh, you you slept all day. I think you're sick or something, right? You don't even know what day it is. But uh, but Jared Knight, <laughs> good. And I knew him back when he was in Titan FC. He was fucking everybody up. I was a fan of him then. He got into the UFC. He he had some. He fought Alan Juban on like a day notice. Uh, it was a good fight though. It was a good fight. Fought a couple other guys. He won some. He lost some. Always had exciting fights. And then he got cut. Then he fought like some weird promotion. What was that thing? You what did you fight in? What was that? Well, I fought uh, X MMA and I fought uh yeah I think it was X MMA was the new one and NFC. <laughs> I fought yeah. X MMA. Yeah, he was like fighting in barns and, and, and like homeless shelters. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, so then the, like the movies you see on like Amazon Prime where like these people are fighting and you're like, what what promotion yeah, is this? Mansion fights and shit. <laughs> so then then he goes and he uh, then he goes and fight takes a fight on like eight day notice. He misses weight, right? Uh, so but then you said for your last fight, you said you you let your coach take over. You said you gave it up to your coach. Now what does that mean for all the people watching this? His coach is Jesus. Yeah, <laughs> not for real. I, I see him as like that, like that for real. But um, what I, the, what I mean, I gave full control to my coach is I've been doing this this sport for going on thirteen years. My coach has been doing and living this sport for thirty for over thirty years. You know what I mean? So I, I just gave him the reins. Like my coach has been doing this since back in the nineties and like late eighties. You know what I mean? So he knows his stuff. He's like very old school, and I love that. You know what I mean? So he just like the like not my age, the new age. We have all these. New things. Oh, we believe this is gonna help us fight. This is gonna make us help us fight better. But coach is like, nah, man, get out there, run, train. And that's it. You know, what I, mean? I just gave coach my uh, full reins of what I do, and I got a got a second round finish, man. So I'm I'm expecting the same this fight. You know, coach has full reins again. Whatever he says, do I'm doing. That's what I. You know what? You know your story. I love Henry Cejudo. He's one of my favorite people in the world. One of my best friends. But his last time, his coach was telling me he wanted to do his own training camp, bring in his own people make his own schedule and i'm just like oh, like when has that ever worked uh it seems like that only works with conor mcgregor for a little bit and then you get <laughs> elite guys who just don were you ever that guy did you ever make your own it only works it works it, it works in the rocky movie man yeah so. rocky balboa that's who does it <laughs> yeah
Uh, yeah. Don, that yeah. was your problem, yeah. right? Yeah. Wasn't that your problem when you were training uh, uh, Brock Lesnar, right? And Mark Kerr uh, stepped in and was like trying to tell you how to do it. What, wasn't that one of the issues there? Yeah. Just one day, I didn't train Lesnar. He came down, you know, one one day, it was one workout, and he brought Kerr with him, and Kerr, he said, jump in and interrupted everything. And, and everything he said was fucking idiotic. And, um, <laughs> you know, he was so doped up. So I'm sure he's better now that he's off the star stuff, you know. But, um, yeah, it, it was... The the wrong the wrong uh, intelligence was he was getting. I don't know, Jared. Um, are you at a camp with a lot wrong, of uh, wrong information? A lot of a lot of pros in your camp, or a lot of are. What's your what's your camp like? Believe it or not, it's just me and my coach right now. Like I have. Oh, come uh, on, what was I just <laughs> saying? <laughs> wait, 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 wait. It, it's not like I. Just, I'm not believing. Like I said, I'm not in full control of my camp. My coach is, <laughs> but um, like I said, I have my jujitsu uh, gym I go to. Um, and like. Those are my, like there's no pros out there either, <laughs> so I was just doing jujitsu out there. So yeah, right now it's just it's just me and my coach, man. And that was it was the same way last fight. You're gonna see the same result this fight, man. And All right, so I'm betting on your opponent. What's his name? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> hey, go ahead, man. I'm betting on myself this, no this fight. Too, I'm betting on you no, ten out of ten times. I'm betting on you because uh, you're like the Terminator. These people they hit you, but you, just, you keep going. I honestly think that you would have won every single fight if there were no rounds. Uh, 100%. Because he's he's one of these guys, Bill, that like you can't hurt him. Can't he, knock him out. No, 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 he has no neck. So <laughs> you know, it's, like his chin is part of his belly button. He so it's like <laughs> you, you, you can't, no, you can't hurt this guy. You can't hurt this guy. You're not gonna you're not gonna hurt him. Uh, You've never been knocked out before in a fight. I, I've been TKO. I've never been knocked out. Like I was TKO, but I was still conscious. But I've been uh yeah, I've been stopped. Exactly. Now, why why night train? Why night train? <laughs> I love I love this story. The reason night train is because um when I was amateur, I went six and one as an amateur. My last amateur fight, I won the Georgia amateur belt, and um my uncle was was there with us, and um he watched my fight. And my uncle used to draw for Marvel or DC. I keep forgetting to ask him which one, but he, he, used, to, he used to draw for them. And so we made it back to the house. I'm with my belt and with my girl at the time. And my mom's looking at my uncle. She's like, "What would you, what would you name him?" Because she hated my nickname at the time. My nickname was like my bad. She was like, "What would you, what would you name him if you could?" And my uncle just stared at me. He's just like, all intense, like, and he, out of nowhere, he's like, "Night train." And I'll never forget. He's like, he held it out. He's like, "Night train." <laughs> that was so funny to me. That's but um, I asked him why, and he, he was like, "Because you're always moving forward in a in a fight like a train." And you're dark as fuck. I'm like, you bastard. <laughs> Your nickname was My Bad. Yeah. That's the yeah, worst. But... Like you like you hit someone and you're like, my bad, my bad. Like, I can't think of a literally. You might as well be the cuck. <laughs> that's, that's horrible. My bad. Yeah, it, was, it was terrible. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. My mom hated that nickname. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm glad my uncle came out with Night Train, man. I, I'll admit I, at first I didn't like it, but I told my coaches like the next day and it stuck. <laughs> My bad is what I tell a girl when I bust too early. I'm like, hey, hey, you're not the only one. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, Jared, uh, I'm a fan for life. Thank you for coming out. Where can people follow you? Oh, you can find me on Instagram, which is Night Train MMA 23. Find me on Twitter, capital J, capital G, Night Train, Night Train 23. So I can't talk, right? Um, Man, bro, I, I just want to I want to thank you for this interview, man. You're awesome. I want you to know you haven't cracking up the entire time. No worries. Hey, can I no. Yes. Can I please ask one question? Sure. Hey, may, may I ask Mr. Don, Mr. Fry? Man, may I please ask you? Yes, sir. May I ask yes. you what is what is the best thing that fighting has brought to you in life, if I can ask? Not Wi Fi. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> Don, can you hear him? Uh, all right. The best thing the fighting has brought to me is uh, lots of pussy. I've had so many girls sit on that fucking mustache. Not my ex wife, though. Too. My ex wife took half my shit. Uh, <laughs> fucking, that fucking whore. If you see her, why don't you give her that Night Train cock of yours? She needs some fuck <laughs> dick. She probably has already had about fucking 87 fucking Night Trains. They, she, they, that's all she does is get a fucking caboose run on her. Yeah, dude. It's horrible. That fucking. Dunk, can you hear us now? 
Yo. Don? All right, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll I think uh, Night Train triggered him. He left. Yeah, triggered Night Train. But yeah, it's been the best. Uh, when I when I uh, when I to beat Dan Severn, that bitch ass pussy. Uh, not Dan Severn. Uh, uh, Ken Shamrock, that fucking pussy. Tell him he's a Don. Can you Don? Can, is there any way he could get better Wi Fi? It's a it's a good question, Don. All right, Don. Is good there morning, any, half, buddy. All right, Don. Don, what did uh? What's the best thing? Engineer. Yeah, yeah. What's the best? Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. So Jared asked you, uh, Jared, you want to ask him again? Hundred percent, Mister Fry. What's the best thing fighting has brought to you? Yeah. What's the best thing? Yes, sir. Uh, well, besides money, you know, it exposed me. It exposed me to myself. What it really was, you know, Whoa. that that I really was better than what I thought I was. You know, that's, that's beautiful. That's deep. And in some ways, I was worse than I thought it was, too. So, <clears throat> mm. yes, sir. I, yeah. I, I, I get what you mean. What weight are you, partner? I'm sorry. Yeah. What weight are you nowadays? <laughs> what weight I, are you nowadays? Yes, sir. I fought a Walter weight at 170. Yes, sir. I fought at 170 at uh -huh. Walter weight. But I'm walking yeah, around one ninety right now. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Don, yeah. let's, 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 let's all right. Let's what, let him go. What, 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 what is the weight? Uh, he he, he uh, fights at one seventy, but he walks right at like one ninety. Yes, sir. Yeah. His yeah. Well, what what is Walter weight? One seventy, seventy five. What is it? One seventy. One seventy. One seventy. One seventy. Yes, sir. All right. So this twenty five pound weight cut. That ain't bad. Yeah. Yeah, uh, that ain't bad shit. His cock is five pounds, so you know that's the thing. <laughs> <laughs> all, all he's gotta do is get all he's gotta do is get shrinkage and it fucking shrivels up. So yeah. Bro, bro, hey, can I tell you something real quick, man? Hey, look, look. I'll never forget there was a fight I took. I was at least 25 years old. I had to cut weight. I had to cut 25 pounds in three days, right? I remember being in an Epsom salt bath in my tub just just dying. I remember the day of weigh-ins. <laughs> I'm just in the tub and I haven't looked down and I'm just I'm like I'm just flicking my dick. I'm just like oh, little dick. It's little dick. It's like, it wasn't like it wasn't mine, man. So well, like, now you know what it feels like. Not my well, yeah, well now you know how we <laughs> feel, asshole. All right. That, you know, well, no, I would never say that. Y'all kill me. <laughs> that was awesome. That's like, yeah, he's like, yeah, he's like, yeah. he's like I might take it. He it Adam. Yeah, he named it. <laughs> Nicknamed Adam Hunter. Yeah, the Adam, the Adam. Come on, little Adam. Adam. Come on, little Adam. Adam. Get up. We went from night train to fucking day shift. Um, <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Well, day listen, bus. Jared, thank you for everything, man. Good luck in your fight, and uh, take care, brother. Thank you, guys. Y'all be safe, guys. Thank you, and again, thank you to the legend, thank Don't Brother. All right, that was Jared. Good luck, brother. Good luck. Nice guy. Fucking great guy, right? Yeah. Yeah. Good guy, good guy, man. Shit, shit, yeah. So, uh, yeah. so he was supposed to come on uh, in, a, in a half an hour. So the the the, the show got kind of swapped. Uh, but it is what it is. Uh, by the way, I got to talk to you, man. So I'm on that Russell Peters tour, and it's the greatest. Like, like everything is you know, first class, five star hotels, Rolls Royce. $35 million mansion we're staying in, staying in. And, and the whole time, my 8,000 people will show. And I'm telling myself, this is not your tour. Don't all you had to do is carry his luggage, huh? Yeah. All I got to do is blow him and uh, and carry his luggage. And I'm telling myself, this is not my tour. Don't get used to this. Don't get used to this. All right. Now I'm back to Spirit Airlines, middle seat. Uh, I'm staying at the Comfort Inn. And I got I fucking got used to it. I, I got you. It's like, it's like banging. Yeah, you spoiled real fast. Yeah, real, real fast, real fast. Uh, has that did that ever happen to you, Don? Yeah, yeah. When I was um, on that movie Miami Vice, I, I was sitting outside um, the outside bar with Colin Farrell a couple of times, and you know, like the guy just sticks his head out the door, women come running, you know. So I just. All these women come up and start talking to him and, you know, blah, blah. And then they look at me, what did you do? I carry his luggage. <laughs> <laughs> what did you play in Miami Vice? Uh, not much. Not much. I got I got killed by Jamie Foxx in the trailer. You know, it was, it was great. I was there for like two months, I think. 
And then, um, they split all right, you're, Don. I I love you to death. One Don, time I did a. I love yeah, you. You're my but, favorite. You're my favorite human being in the world. I love you. You're, you're, you're the uncle I always wanted, right? But this is what I'm. But you're talking, and I'm 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 engaged, and then I'm hearing. Yeah. Rub, 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 rub. Well, so uh, I could I could pretend to like list to understand what you're saying and laugh and like be like aha, <laughs> but. But I don't think you deserve that because uh, I really want to hear that. Uh, is there any place uh, where the, the Wi-Fi is better? I don't know. Fuck, I have to go back and lay in bed. Let me lay in the bed. <laughs> <laughs> so Jamie Foxx so Fox killed you? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got to watch that movie again, that Miami Vice again. Just, how, how, is your yeah, part big gun? Are you in a lot? No. No, don't say a fucking word. Don't you don't even I didn't even know it was me. It was so fast, you know? It's at the end of the movie. The end of the movie where he comes into the trailer to, to save his girlfriend. And then I I jump up with a bat, swing a bat, he ducks, he stabs me, and it shoots me in the back of the head. Well, I mean, it's, it sounds like that took what one day of filming? Yeah, it took one day of filming, but I was there for two months, you know. Oh, um, I why do they have you there for two months? It was great. I, just, I guess they didn't know what the hell to do with me. Shit, I don't know. Um, I did a stunt. <laughs> I had a different part at first to where he rings the doorbell and I answered the door. And he and I reach, and he says, pizza. And I reach for the pizza and he sweeps my arm and it throws me from the trailer steps down to the patio. He did it 13 fucking times. And oh, wow. there was no pad. No fucking pad. Yeah, that's what my bad my back was bad. But it really went bad after that. Dude, I uh I, I booked an A6 commercial one time to be a wrestler, right? And and in the in the in the in the audition, I was throwing everyone around because it wasn't it was a couple guys wrestled like you know, middle school, high school, but no one really knew how to wrestle. So I was like doing like Japanese arm throws and all these, you know, cool things. And then I booked it, and the kid yeah. that had, the kid they had me with was like, "I never wrestled before." I'm like, "Well, why did you get this?" So he didn't know how to land. So I'm I'm trying to throw him on his head, and he doesn't know how to land. So he's getting hurt, you know. And I'm being gentle. So then they 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 they, they get rid of him, like they fire him on the set and bring in a fucking D one All American mm. like guy ranked third in the fucking world. And then I now I'm playing the dummy part. And, and then, uh, and I get thrown yeah. for, for like nine hours. I get thrown on my fucking head. It, what a shitty turn of events that came out to be, uh, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All it takes is, all it takes is one person not liking the way you look. Oh, he has a mustache. <laughs> I don't like the mustache or, you know, or, so, or he, he reminds me of my, of, uh, my uncle who, who touched me, you know? So all it takes is, one fucking producer, and okay. you're fucked. By the way, Don, you like my shirt? Yeah, I do, <laughs> man. Style. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I, I, I've, I've worn this. I like it a lot. This is my favorite shirt. I wear it everywhere, by the way. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, say, uh, what the fuck is that? <laughs> it doesn't matter. The, the, the people that know, know. Bill, what's going on with you? Let me guess. You're on the set of a crazy movie or something. What's going on with you? No stuff for me, man. I'm 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 home with bronchitis. What happened? Uh that's why you say I'm manly. <laughs> <laughs> don't make me laugh, I'll call. Um, really? Yeah, I don't know, man. I just <laughs> have you ever had like acute bronchitis where you like can't literally fucking it's like yeah. in your lungs for weeks and shit? Yeah. Yeah. yeah so yeah. I'm just I'm just in that space. Yeah, I fought Aki Bono like that. No way. I bronchitis when I fought Aki Bono. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, I had a bad back and bronchitis. Then I had a really bad back after the fight. <laughs> <laughs> but your bronchitis was cured. So uh, I just. Yeah, yeah. He knocked it out of me. Yeah. <laughs> so I literally went from like, I went from US to Dubai to South Africa to Egypt to Oman, I know, to Doha to uh, Saudi to India. I was home for three days. Did a cruise ship, went to Honduras, 
flew from Honduras back to LA, was home for one day, went to Vegas, home, went to New York, and now I'm in El Paso all in the last month. So I'm just like, that's why there hasn't been po a podcast for two weeks, by the way. But you know, I, you can slow down a little bit. After all that, you didn't have to go to El Paso. <laughs> I didn't have to do a lot of this shit. The problem is, is I'm a whore. He's but, trying to sneak into the country. Dude, seriously, <laughs> I'm right there. I'm like, I'm five miles. I'm five minutes from where all those people jumped the, jump the border. And oh, yeah. I, I even said, yeah. I even said, I'm like, they're all coming to my show tonight. <laughs> I'm like, that way they'll run back into Mexico. No, they'd be, they'd be going the other way. Yeah. They, had, they had tickets to your show, they'd be going the other way. 100 percent so i'm on a cruise and there are these two like beautiful black women who are like in their 20s and their mom and i'm like oh what's your name one of them's name was heaven which like don't Ooh, name don't name your kid heaven like because every time someone bangs her they're like i'm in heaven you know like that's you're like i'm ready to go to heaven right yeah where's the stairway right <laughs> i'm the stairway, coming to heaven yeah. <laughs> yeah right and then uh and then i was reading about this couple that named their kids during during covid uh co covid and corona they had two twins named covid and corona <laughs> i'm like I, I, they probably have older siblings named aids and cancer Brilliant. like why would they and and uh yeah so that that was crazy and then i did a show in ontario improv right so i'm on a show it's me and chris spencer so before i go on somebody was like hey listen uh uh, before you go on, some guy wants to propose to his wife on the stage, right? Which you know is not. What do you think fun. about that, Adam? Because I, I actually think that's fun. No, I know some comics hate it. Of course. Well, do it after the show, at the end, or before the show, but like in the middle of the show when you got to follow that, right? And it was like yeah. this like, Mexican dude wearing like a Raiders jersey, right? And they've been together for like fourteen years. So he, so he, the host brings him up first. They're like, he's like, why don't you, how long have you been together? Oh, 14 years. When are you going to marry her? And the guy's like, funny, you should ask. So the guy gets on stage, right? And brings the, and brings his girlfriend on stage. And then he's like, he makes a speech and the speech is like, yo, uh, I know I haven't been a good boyfriend to you, but, uh, things are going to change. <laughs> 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 like they always do. Sister pregnant, and uh, <laughs> yeah, I banged your mom, and uh, I owe you money. You know, like, and right? I haven't had a job in ten years, but they already have three kids together, right? So, it, so then I go on afterwards, and I'm like, well, what does that even mean? I, I did he cheat? Like, yes, yeah, so everyone's dying laughing. I'm like, I give this marriage a week, right? Right? So then, like, just so then the guy came up to me oh. after. And they were like, oh, that was really funny. That was so, they gave me hugs. Thank God. Dude, then there was a comic I met, right? I'm not going to say his name. So I met this comic. It was a right after I shot my special in uh, for the Vegas in Vegas. And I go to this comedy club. They're having a Christmas party. And there's a comic there who I've known for years. Really great comic. But he's like in tears. And I'm like, oh, what's the matter, man? He's like, oh, yeah, you're special. Yeah, that was great. Thanks for, thanks for the invitation. I really enjoyed it, man. It was fucking fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. So the guy's in tears, and I'm like, well, what's the matter? And he's like, dude, my wife's doing OnlyFans now. He's like, well, we're, I haven't worked, and she's getting naked in the kitchen, and she's, like, fingering herself and, and showing her asshole, and they have a kid, you know, and he's like, and he said he wants to leave, but she's bringing in all kinds of money, right? So I, what would you tell somebody like that, Don? Kill himself? No. Oh, fuck, I got no idea. Yeah. You know what? At least he's making money instead of, you know, uh, at least he's sharing the money instead of keeping it for herself, like mine did, you know? Fuck. So I didn't know what to say. So I was like, man, you know, hang in there. But So I tell my friend, we have a mutual friend, and I'm like, dude, did you hear that What's Name's wife has OnlyFans? He's like, I know, I joined it. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, I the first him. one. He's like, that's how I support his family. <laughs> it's like, but there's also different types of OnlyFans. There's OnlyFans. There's OnlyFans. No, she's like but, not the good kind. She's the finger. So she's banging other dudes on it. No, but she's showing her asshole and like she's fingering herself and showing her titties. And so uh, anyway, they're they're like 
they're like divorced now because I, I ran into them again and they're like divorced. And I, I told them, I said, man, I don't care how bad the money gets. I would never let my wife have an, a, a thing where she fingers herself. You know, I don't care if I have to drive Uber all fucking week uh, and do whatever, you know, but I'm not letting my wife. Yeah, but she'd be, she be doing her only, she'd be doing her only fan page while you're driving Uber, man. Fuck. That's a thing. <laughs> yeah, that's why she's once, doing only fan. Once they decide. You're an Uber driver. Yeah, once they decide to do something like that. Yeah. I, you know, once they decide to do something like that, you know, fuck. I, I agree. I would, I, you, would, you would let your wife do that, Bill? Well, I mean, that's that's such a weird because I would never marry some dumb bitch who didn't only fans ever like the type of woman I would be with right. is the woman who right. would consider it. Yeah. Well, I guess, yeah. Well, I guess she was a dancer. I don't know, man. That's that's why I'm single, too. So what am I? Who am I talking? Don, you would not <laughs> let your girl do an only. Right. There's no way, Don, you would let your wife do only fans. No way. No, no, no. But the type of woman I'm who like, does so, it. I thought I married a girl that wouldn't do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's, but let me. But Adam, this is my that? theory. The the woman who did the OnlyFans, she was always that bitch. She was always a nasty, dusty slut. Yeah, you know what I mean. It's not like she became one because of yeah. times yeah. It was tough. Yeah. All right, I'm not saying all OnlyFans people right. are nasty, dusty sluts, and I don't think Bill's saying that either. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying that I wouldn't want my yeah. personal wife, uh, ha anyone having access to her vagina and asshole. Uh, I like to feel like I'm a member of an elite club of one where I'm the <laughs> only person yes. that gets to see her asshole and her vagina. And I don't want anyone yes. to put $25 to be able to see that. Um, we all like to feel that way, but <laughs> <laughs> we all like to feel that way. But sometimes yeah. we find out otherwise. For the record, I, I, yeah. I shame sex workers for the record. I'll I, put it, I don't care. Don't cut it. Sex work is not work. It's bullshit, and it contributes to child trafficking. All of it does. No, I'm not I into disagree it. because I. All right, I disagree because there was a girl I used to date who was a stripper, and I, I dated a lot of strippers in my life, right? And even some mm -hmm. porn stars. Okay, so and yeah, some I, are still alive. I yeah, wouldn't marry them, but but there was a but there was a one who uh, from Hungary, this girl from Hungary that was uh, sending money home to her family. She was stripping, and she was helping her family with the money she did by stripping. There, there's no shame in that. There's no shame in. Uh, Cindy Dandwa, who has the five kids, who uh, has an OnlyFans, but she's supporting her family doing that. that there, there's no shame in that. But if, if, if I'm if I'm married to somebody, I'm play, I'm taking the financial responsibility for that. Okay, I'm not I'm not allowing my wife to 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 to, to any right. your coochie. And look, and look, I'm not saying you know someone has cancer and you got to show your pussy to fucking save them save save someone's life. How many know? people are showing their pussy to for cancer? Ah. Come on. <laughs> so my pussy for cancer. It's a new way to fight cancer. <laughs> That's the name of my next uh my 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 next my next uh comedy special. Show my pussy for cancer. Um <laughs> so anyway, uh all right, another thing. So Vegas, I tell you what happened in Vegas. It was the gig that I got you, Bill. So Don, I get this gig, right? This guy hits me up and he's like, Hey, are you still doing comedy? Which is always like an insult, right? When someone says he's still doing comedy, you're like, great. That's, <laughs> right. you know, Megan Olivia asked me that. And I was like, ugh. Right? That's so, amazing. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> So I get a text. Hey, I'm like, yeah. He's like, I met you with Coolio, right? I never met Coolio, but I'm like, all right. He's like, I want to book you at Coolio Social Club, right? And if I've heard this story before, I don't care. So next thing I know, I'm on a flight. First class spirit. Which, by the way, first class spirit is like being the best looking girl on the view. You know, it's not really. There's a first class spirit? Yeah, there's a first class spirit airlines. It just means like you're sitting down or something. Right. So I like. You what... have a seatbelt for free? Yeah, you don't, you don't have to hang on like this, like in the bus. That's what it means. So I fly out, yeah, right? Yeah. And then the guy picks me up. I'm staying at a place called the We Are In, right? We Are In, I N N. Like that's. And they give me a key. Like, it's not even like, they don't even have room keys, like an actual metal key for my room, right? So I, I, I get to the gig. It's in like a VFW type hall, but not even like, there's like slot machines everywhere. But the guys told me, that the guy in charge told me, oh, it's not gambling. It's actually just video games that you can win money that take, uh, he somehow got this cleared, right? And uh, I get there and I'm like, how come you didn't pick me up? So the guy uh, drove his car into a dam. The, the guy in charge, right? And so his car was like hanging off. It was a meme. 
uh, that said like catch of the day where they were fishing out his car from the dam, right? And uh, and I was like, were you like, damn, right? So I, I get there mm. and the, the opener is this lesbian, butch lesbian chick, but says she's not a lesbian, but she fucks her, her husband in the ass who's in jail. And she's creeping the people out. There's like 20 people there, probably about 20 teeth, right? And, and, and she's Jeez. freaking them out, right? And then there's a guy with an eye patch. I that was like, hey, next time I'll pick you up from the thing. I'm like, I like my drivers to have two eyes, but, but thank you. And he also brought his own moonshine, right? People had their own moonshine there, right? So this was the crowd. <clears throat> so the next I day- I can confirm all of this, by the way. The next day, the lesbian doesn't come back. She she bombs so bad, she does four minutes. So then the guy's like, I got to fill three hours. So I'm like, I'll do an extra hour and a half. And he's like, I'll pay you X amount cash. So he gives me like, a stack of cash, like all hundreds- and then I go on. I fucking kill it. Have a you, just, you fucked up my son. So then there's like a fight. Like somebody. You, you, you might want to. You might want to erase this. So some. some <laughs> why? That money was obtained legally. Yes. Legally done. Yeah, legally. So then, like, so then there was like a, a fight that breaks out. Someone starts heckling. The bouncer takes him in the back. In the back. I hear the guy getting beat up during the show. You hear like, ow, 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 right? So then, um, <laughs> so then the guy's like, I want you to write this. Ow, 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 ow you're hitting me. Up the bouncer. You bit my finger. Ow. Oh, that hurts, man. So then, then another guy tells me that he's with this girl and they like to pee on each other and they make pee tapes together. It was a whole fucking thing. Anyway, the guy hires me to write a musical. I never wrote a musical before in my life, but I actually wrote a, a Vegas musical. <laughs> so then I, I write a musical based on this concept. Peeing in the rain? <laughs> yeah, peeing in the rain. Right, exactly. Uh, <laughs> So so then they fly me out last week to Vegas to film to, to record the, the the beginning of the musical to make the trailer to record the musical. I mean to film the to film the sizzle for it, right? Uh, okay. It's like it's like a rock musical. It's actually they have a great band. It, it actually might make it. They say they have a deal in place. So and I don't want me to be the host. They pick me up from the airport, right? And there's a guy in the back who's like 65, 70 year old Italian guy. And I asked the guy, my, my friend, I'm like, where'd you guys meet? He's like, oh, we met in prison. Mm -hmm. I, I go, oh, okay. He goes, he was the magician and I was the rock star. And we used to do always win every prison talent show, <laughs> right? So, <laughs> and then he's like, next time you're in town. You we'll make things disappear up your ass. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, next time you're in town, I'll take you. I'll take you gun shooting with machine guns I'm like, and ATVs. I got, Don, you got to meet this guy. This guy's right up your alley, dude. Uh, so that was, uh, oh, and then some of the jokes I wrote, though, they didn't tell the band that I was the comic and the musical because they had these like three black singers and like all these great singers. But I was doing like Michael Jackson jokes. Like I said, I saw the Michael Jackson, you know, uh, review in Vegas and it was so realistic. Halfway through it, Michael Jackson starts fucking kids, right? And, and then they get, they get angry. I could tell they get like annoyed, like no more Michael Jackson jokes. So that was last week. And then I flew out to do Gutfeld again. Oh, but my, 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 my dad came to visit me, by the way, my, my dad's sober now. And I love my dad to death, but when he's sober, he's not, because there was a time where like, I had a dog on my dog bit everybody. It was used as bait for pit bull fighting. Like anyone that touched the dog, but my dog would bite and he had a tough yeah. life. My, and my dad hated the dog, but my dad took care of the dog when I wasn't around. And the dog like bit my my stepmom in the face. She had to go get like surgery. It just like this dog should have been put put down a hundred million times, but I, I like loved it. Anyway, one day my dad's like, hey, how's your dog doing? And I'm like, great. He's like, I miss that guy. I'm going to go walk him. I'm like, that's a little strange. Like my dad never, I'm like, okay. So I come home, half my weed is missing. I had all this weed. <laughs> And I'm like, so my dad used my dog as a fucking accomplice to steal my weed. So I'm like, dad, did you steal my marijuana? And he goes, why? He doesn't even say yes or no. no. The dog did. <laughs> Dude, then there's this like, there's an anchor. There was a KTLA news anchor yeah. in, my, in my building, right? In my dad's building, right? And she had a dog. And my dog went to bite her dog, right? 
So she fucking flips. This dog should be, and she's like a big animal activist. And she's like, this dog should be put to sleep. This fucking, just going off. And then my dad's like, calm down, sweetie. My dad's old, my dad's like Don. He's an old school guy. So he's like, calm down, sweetie, right? So then this big security guard comes. We did the podcast. He's six foot six named Quentin. He's got like eight kids. Huge black dude. Great guy. And uh, so he tells me, he's like, dude, your dad's a legend. He's like, why? He goes, this woman says, you were sexually advancing on me by calling him sweetie. And my dad goes, not, in, he goes, not on your best day. <laughs> <laughs> then my dad tells me he's in the elevator with her, right? Uh, that this chick from KTLA, right? From the news anchor. And he's with his, my dad's with his wife. And he's like, you know who I think's really, and he's pretending that she's not there. And he goes, you know who I think's really pretty on KTLA? And then names like seven other news anchors and <laughs> doesn't name her. <laughs> just uh just a fucking anyway. So uh anyway, then I, I got off the plane and I was your dad likes to stir this shit. Yeah, dude. Seriously, sorry, that does like so then I, I got off the plane from he does, he does. I didn't realize your dad was remarried again. Yeah, yeah, he's married for the third time. Uh, she's she's the one. She's awesome. Uh, I told her out of all my moms, I, I, I like you the best. And she's so, younger than you. No, 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 no. She's not. She's actually age appropriate. She's like, uh, she's like, oh, know, she's like, she's like Don's age. Uh, so, uh, yeah. So, <laughs> so and she's and now, still moving. Yeah, she's still moving. Uh, she's like like Don. She's on her back a lot. Uh, so. <laughs> I'm kidding. So, <laughs> so I get off the plane, Bill, and I go to this daddy and daughter donut day at school. I go right from LAX to meet my kid because all the daddies and daughter donut at her Christian school, right? So and then we I, and I have to go to chapel. And as a, as a Jew, I just love that, right? Because I'm learn, I'm learning yeah. about like the Jews killed Jesus um, for Easter. Bastards. <laughs> like nothing. Like <laughs> they dude. When I was in when I was yeah, in, but you know what? You know what? The what? Jews killed Jesus. If it wasn't if it wasn't for the Jews, the Christians wouldn't have a fucking religion. You know, come on. Exactly. Exactly. They all won. They all won. Jeez. When I was mm -hmm. in Egypt, when I was in Egypt, someone when we saw the pyramids, someone's like, "You think the Jews killed the pyramids?" I'm like, "No, nah, they would have hired Mexicans." Um. <laughs> so, uh, but meanwhile, you know, my kid goes to that school because of the murder that happened. I told you about the murder at my kid's school, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 Uh, one of the one of the boy's parents uh, had the father killed the mother and her parents, chopped up the mother, who was the sweetest woman ever, and then hired Mexicans to get rid of the bodies in, in, in like duffel bags, oh, in garbage bags. And then they were they found belly buttons in garbage bags and then they returned it and they still haven't. So we, we, well, we how many people did they kill? He killed three. He killed his wife and her parents. And they chopped them up and put them in garbage bags. And then there's a video of him moving the garbage bags into dumpsters. The guy is like the worst fucking serial killer ever or murderer ever. The fucking he's a horrible person. Awful. I hope he gets death penalty. Uh, but the, then, um, you know, I didn't want to explain to my kid that this is and this is the second incident that happened at that school. Not the first one wasn't as severe as that, but the second thing. Was, but like so we're sitting in, in church the first time. First day I'm in church and the pastor is like. You know, you're all here because, you, you, you know, you guys need Jesus in your life. And I'm like, uh, I'm here because William's dad's a psycho. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so anyway, and then last night I'm in El Paso last night and I'm on stage. I'm fucking like, I don't even know what time zone I'm in. Of course, I get a heckler. This like Mexican woman just yelling shit out the whole time. It's just yelling stuff. And she was like. I was like, do you have a boyfriend? And she's like, no. And I'm like, well, I think there's hope for you on Love is Blind and Deaf. And then it just <laughs> fucking killed her. Uh, have you ever have you ever almost lost a crowd, Bill, with the point where you almost thought you couldn't get him back? Oh, my God. Yeah, of course. I'm just trying to think the last time it happened to me. And I'm trying to think what I did. <laughs> Usually what's happened is you go into the crowd and and the crowd wins when you go back and you have nothing after that oh and then yeah. it's gone you need something really good even when you lose right and if you don't have that man you're you're done they own it well i like doing the rope-a-dope strategy where you let the heckler get off one 
And then he yeah. gets, then he gets comfortable and he forgets it. And the whole time he's thinking, I got you. And then you like you wait 10, 15 minutes and then you just fucking bury him. You know, because uh, yeah. then he's not he's yeah. like, oh, shit. Like he thought the fight was over and you just, yeah. you know, just oh, that's my favorite is, is like the rope dope. But I remember I was in, I was in Modesto right when uh, the Gary Condit thing happened. Remember Gary Condit? There was like an intern missing and Scott Peterson uh, killed Lacey Peterson in this little town called, in Modesto. So I, I go up there and I go, it's like 80 percent Mexican. It's a place called Fat Cats. And I was like, yo, it's great to be here. You know, you hear so many great things about this place on the news, right? And that that gets a laugh. And I go, man, you got Gary Condit. You, 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 have, you, have, you have Lacey Peterson. Uh, you have, you know, I go, what's in the water here? Oh, yeah, Lacey Peterson. <laughs> oh, man. Dude, the place went from laughing to straight booing. Like, Whoa, really? Like, yeah, oh, yeah. Man, it was cool. fun. And then I got him back. Oh. I somehow got him back, but I almost got booed off immediately. I got that. That set almost lasted thirty seconds. You know, uh, but Boy, you're at the uh, her, her class reunion. You know, fuck you. You got to time this stuff. <laughs> yeah, you got to you got to time this stuff. Oh you wait, gotta know, you gotta know you got to know your audience. Right, Actually, yeah, right, Adam. Have you been to a place in Temecula called Bastards Canteen? No. There's a giant painting at the back of the stage it's actually it's, a, it's kind of like a military, a lot of military that is. <laughs> and and the painting is of the guy who was like the the sergeant who ran this platoon who died in the war in afghanistan or something but it looks like fidel castro oh no so yes i'm killing 30 minutes straight and then all of a sudden i turn around i go why is there a giant picture of fidel castro I'm sorry, Justin Trudeau behind me, or something like that. I made like yeah. a Justin Trudeau. Uh, the audience went like pit, and this is all military people. Oh no! It went in drop quiet, and somehow I, I I got back by the end. I had you know how polite military people are. Yeah, but yeah. they were like quietly seething and wanting to kill. And one of them was like, you know, you're lucky because that was our platoon leader who oh. died. And, I mean, I was like, fuck it, dude. That's pretty how bad. How are you supposed to know? You know, I know I didn't know. Well probably not being an idiot because it's a show for this guy yeah. <laughs> there's a painting of him. so bill, like how the, bill how's it going with the baby mama it's uh it's it's going it's going we're we're getting along getting now, along does she want you to be ex exclusive to her and live at <sighs> home and do the whole thing or no i mean does she want to get back together with me yeah yeah, yeah i yeah. think most single moms probably want to get back together with their ex even if they hate them just for convenience, you know. They want the money. They want the fucking money. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, she's getting yeah, the money. They, they so need fuck. the help. They need the cash. Ah, uh, dude, my daughter. They want the time. They want the time without being somebody else. Yeah. My my, my five year old goes, Daddy, you want to see an impression of mommy? And I, I go, Sure. She goes, Oh, why does Daddy make my life so difficult? <laughs> 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 I was like, I was dying. And I, I, I go, Brie, you want to see the impression? And she was not happy about this impression. She was just like, <laughs> it, it, I thought she'd find it funny. She did not find that funny at all. By the way, Don, did, you, did you ever meet Buff Bagwell? Yeah, he's a good guy. Nice guy, yeah. Did you watch the documentary about Why? him? Why? No. Oh, dude, there's a documentary. No, what happened? There, well, there's a documentary called The Dark Side of the Ring, right? If you're ever if you ever want to see a really mm -hmm. depressing but great documentary, there's about five seasons of it. I think you can watch them all on Hulu. And they talk about all these wrestlers where like some tragedy should happen, like the macho man or this or that. And so now they're on the buff bagwell. And uh he seemed like a good dude. Like he was a male stripper. He knocked up a, he, him, he he had a tough his father was abusive. His father was like threatening to to like murder the mother or something. So he shot his father five times, uh, like growing up because the mom was threatened and the father actually like thanked him afterwards said, I would have done the same thing. Like after, and then he goes into the WWE and he goes into, uh, wait, five, five different times. No, five once. different times. No, five no, times once. Like, 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 <laughs> like, remember no. the second time I shot you? Don't make it be a third dad. No, yeah, you, like, you made it. You made it sound like you was... <laughs> 
No, right. Yeah, yeah. I can understand why you would get confused. Right. So then he, he goes into wrestling and he's doing great. Like he he's in the, the you know, I mean, he's, he's roided out of his mind. He's a fucking psycho. The guy gets he hates the way his legs look. So he gets calf implants to so that his calves look bigger, which he almost dies immediately. Yeah. Like the wrong. Have you ever heard of calf implants, Don? Yeah, I've heard of it. Yeah. Yeah. They, they accuse they accuse Schwarzenegger of that. You know, fucking fifty years ago, right? I think I remember that. I remember that. Yeah. Well, this guy really <laughs> did have calf implants. Mm -hmm. right? So then he uh, he ends up getting calf implants, and then he ends up uh uh he had like a weird storyline where his mom, his his like real mom, was in there, and she was getting like beat up, and him and his mom won. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, so of course Vince McMahon buys the WCW, and he comes over, and he, the first match wasn't good. I think he was like, and then it, and then it goes down to like he gets hooked on pills, and he ends up being like a male gigolo. Uh, he he goes on the show Gigolos, and uh, doesn't realize he has to be a, he has to be a real gigolo. Ends up like fucking this girl. He does a bunch of like B Cinemax movies, and but he can't get it up, and and then he just gets into this like uh, pills, depression, alcohol, and then now he's sobered up thanks to Diamond Dallas Page. And he's like doing better again, buff the stuff. But uh, man, it's just. It's... Wait, have you seen the Iron Claw? Uh, no, I've not seen it. Don, have you seen the Iron Claw? No, I haven't seen that yet. No. I'm telling you guys, you gotta watch. No, I, mean, I haven't I know seen it's it. A, it's a, oh, you seen it? It's it's no, about the family, no. the I don't the know, Eric. The, the wrestling the family, the Bon Eric's, the Bon Eric's. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't know how that that story is the craziest story I've ever heard. Just for one family, all that shit that happened to them. It's Dude. insane. It's, yeah, it is crazy. You should watch it. It's yeah. really good. You should just look. Hey, no homo. Zach Efron's a good actor. <laughs> he is a good actor. He he is a he is a really good actor. Um and then uh so yeah, so uh fighting. So uh by the way, uh tonight there's uh Bellator is is, is in Ireland tonight. No one knows about it. No, they don't. They don't tell anyone about it. I, I think it's another one of these secret shows they have. Uh, it's Corey Anderson. He's a good fighter. He's fighting Carl Moore, uh, who's from Ireland. Who's twelve and two. Corey Anderson should win. Uh, the Pitbull is fighting Jeremy Kennedy. Fabian Edwards, who's Leon Edwards' brother, is fighting Aaron Jeffrey. Uh, that those are all good fighters. Uh, good fights uh, tomorrow night in the UFC. Cody Gibson, who's a guy that got cut from the UFC. He became a school teacher, or he was a school teacher. He's still a school teacher. Um, he's fighting Miles John. Uh, Muhammad Usman, Usman's brother, is fighting. He's it's the first fight of the night, according to MMA Junkie. He won the Ultimate Fighter. Uh, Kurt Holaba is fighting, um, and then Amanda Rebus is fighting Rose Namajunas. Uh, Rose left her her uh, trainer Trevor Whitman, and is back to having Greg Nelson. You know Greg Nelson, right, Don? No, from uh, Texas. I think he's from Minnesota. He was Brock Lesnar's coach. Oh yeah, no, I don't know him. No. Yeah, uh, yeah. So, so he's he's back. I think to, so. He he's back to that. Um, he, he's she's back to him. Um, and then uh, and then Knuckle Mania Four is coming up. Tiago <laughs> Alves versus Mike Perry. It's in Los Angeles, and Mario Lopez is is emceeing it, or is is somehow really involved. yeah. Uh, Ma Mario Lopez, and then also uh, Ben Rothwell is fighting Todd Duffy, but that's not this weekend. That's in a couple weeks. Uh, Knuckle Mania Four. Um, so four. now, Don, are you part of the uh, UFC? Uh, Don, are you part of the UFC settlement? What's that? Are you part of the settlement? The UFC settlement? No, no. What's no? I'm not part of any. What settlement is going on now? Well, they uh, they settled. Basically, it was a class action. Uh, it was a UFC antitrust lawsuit, um, and I think it was they won three hundred and thirty five million dollars. I think again, who won? The the fighters. Who did? The fighters, which people are saying that um for what? Uh, for let, let me see if I could if I could uh, read this to you because uh, I'm I'm not great at this, but uh, a lot of fighters are saying that actually it wasn't a big win for the fighters. Other people are saying, you know, it was the best offer on the table. 
Uh, let's see if I can uh, get this. Here we go. Uh, Dan Hardy says that this is good because he walked away from the GSP fight with five thousand dollars. He fought for the title and, and cleared five grand. Which that's is, insane. It, is there any way that's true, Don? I mean, I believe him. But yeah, yeah. You you be that stupid? You 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 overpay your your uh, manager. You overpay your trainer. You know, you yep. incur a bunch of expenses, you know, trading for the fight. Yeah, yeah it's real easy to walk away $5,000 after your expenses are, are fucking done, you know? Yeah. So, Lawyer, agent, I mean, manager. You got to keep an eye on Yeah, you got to keep an eye on your fucking agent and manager because, like, mine, I stole a million dollars from me from that Shamrock fight, you know? And I got no way to fucking prove it. Oh, fuck! That sucks. Uh, so here we go. Let me see. Let me see what we got here. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. So uh, here we go. Jeremy Kennedy doesn't buy Pitbull. Dana White. Where? Oh, the UFC uh, antitrust settlement. Here we go. Um, UFC reached an agreement. Uh, to close out antitrust lawsuits, promotion agrees to pay out $335 million, right? So UFC has reached a settlement agreement for a pair of antitrust lawsuits that will go no longer go to trial. The parent company filed a disclosure with the securities of the SE Commission revealing that the organization has settled with the, agree the aggrieved parties in two separate lawsuits. And the company agreed to pay out $305 million. It was listed, uh, the plaintiffs in the class, uh, it's Lee at Al versus Zufa, they numbered about 1,200 fighters. Ex experts estimated potential damages they suffered between 894 million and 1.6 billion, though a trial would have determined the final number. Uh, the plaintiffs uh, from two separate lawsuits uh, by fighters such as Kung Lee, Nate Quarry, and Cajun Johnson were in private uh, mediation with the UFC. So I, I'm not sure how much each fighter is going to get, or or how or or like what. They say it's a, people are saying it's a huge victory for the UFC. All right. Um. Yeah, I I don't yeah. know. So what, what what did you say? What did you say the estimate was between what and and, and a billion? That, Eight hundred million and a billion. You said yeah, that, like that, that. That's what they wanted, according to Nate Nate Quarry. Right now, there's a lot I can't say with that. No, we didn't get everything we wanted. Our our, our goal all along was to change the sport. However, we had quite a few delays we had to deal with. Weighing on all possible outcomes, it seemed like the best outcome. We're not high fiving one another, but please, a lot of the fighters are going to be getting some compensation for being underpaid. Wish we could have done more. Um, it's very easy to see to sit in the cheap seats and criticize. Yeah, uh, you know, I'm not sure exactly what everyone got, but uh, so. You know. I mean, 335 million seems like oh, yeah. a lot to spread out. That's a lot. Yeah, the how many fighters are there? Divided by well, well, it was 1,200 people on the list, and I don't know, how, I don't know how much the lawyers get, you know, I don't know how, oh, much, yeah, so yeah, it's true. Lawyers, but the uh, lawyers get half at least. Did anyone watch Roadhouse? Yes, right. how was it? I did. No, what I was really excited for it, uh, and it, it, it becomes like not a good movie by the end. You're like, ah, uh, they, they fucking blew it. Um, how was Conor McGregor? I, I feel like the director said, okay, Conor, just just smile like you're crazy like this the whole time. And you're gonna and don't have, don't worry about acting. Just go, hey, all right, you wanna fight? Let's go. Let's so he, I don't know why I sound like fucking crocodile hunter right now, but huh. he um he just has this crazy grin, he's all like hunched up. He's fine. I mean, literally like I would say forty percent of the movies is him and Jake Gyllenhaal shirtless fighting each other. Clearly, there's some like some fucking a bunch of weird old men jerking off in some corners watching the tapes. I feel like John Fry would have been the best as the Sam. What's his name? The Sam. Uh, the Waterson. older guy. The, the oh old yeah, guy. Sam, oh, Elliot. Sam Elliot. Oh yeah. He would have been a great that character. Sam that character isn't in the movie though. That was the best character in the movie. I agree. That's why this movie fucking sucks. Sam Elliott was bad. the best one in the movie. He stole the whole yeah. movie. Him and Patrick yeah. Swayze. Uh, so there's no Sam Elliott and there's no overboss who's controlling everything. There's a guy calling from prison 
And then just Conor McGregor going like, all right, he wants to fight. 